Hey there, sewers. Welcome to Dart and Sew, where we dream it, make it, and rock it. Today, we'll make a mask by taking our facial measurements. This is not a hospital grade mask. Hopefully, this tutorial will help you make a home mask with a good fit and less gaps around the nose and mouth. You'll need basic sewing supplies, cotton fabric, elastic cord measuring 12 to 16 inches, and if you want to add a nose wire, you need a 6mm pipe cleaner. Now we take four simple measurements. The first measurement is from the bridge of the nose to about an inch past your chin. This is the front of the mask. The second measurement is from the tip of your nose to about half an inch in front of your ear. This will be the width of your mask. The third measurement starts in front of the ear and goes to the angle of the jaw. This is the width of the mask at the side of your face. Go ahead and connect the lines. Remember these are measurements for the model I'm using, so substitute your own measurements. You can use this shape to make your mask, but we will make slight alterations for a better fit. First, use this measurement to mark a point along the bottom horizontal line. The point should be the closest to the front vertical line. Now make a curve using the front vertical line as a guide. You can use a curved ruler or you can just freestyle it. Do the same for the top line. Using freehand or you can use a curved ruler. Notice the bottom curve slightly moved back using the point we marked with our last measurement. Now it's time to draw in the new shape that you've created. We will be cutting out four identical pieces of fabric from this pattern. Now you're ready to cut out your pattern. Now it's time to cut our fabric. I'm using 100% cotton. I got these quarter yard pieces from the craft store. You can make two masks from one piece. You'll need to cut four identical pieces of fabric to make two layers of fabric for your mask. I have folded my fabric into four layers so I can cut all four pieces at the same time since I'm using the same fabric for everything. But you can have fun and mix and match your fabric colors. You can also add an extra layer of flannel or filter or something else if you want a thicker or a more dense mask. After you're done cutting, place the right sides of the fabric pieces together and pin. My fabric is the same color on both sides, so it doesn't matter which sides I pin together. Sew the pieces together using a quarter inch seam allowance.
clipping the seam allowance makes a smooth curve when you clip it over later. Now press the seams open using an iron or your nails. This will allow the seam allowance to lay flat so it's not bulky. Now it's time to put the front and the back layers of the mask together with the right sides facing each other. Pin the center seams together first, then pin the sides. This will help you line up your seams and have a professional looking construction. Now take it to your machine and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance at the top and bottom, leaving the sides open. Now your mask is starting to take shape. This is a good time to hold it up to your face to check the fit. Don't worry about the length, we'll be creating a pleat at the side. We'll be using half an inch seam allowance. We'll need to leave a small opening of about 1.5 inches on one end. This will be used to flip out our mask at the end. There are many ways to secure the mask to your face. Today we'll be using a quarter inch elastic that is 12 inches long and cut into two 6 inch strips. Feel free to add one more inch to each strip if you want more flexibility to shorten later. You can pin the elastic to the mask and try it on before sewing it. Insert the plastic one end at a time and pin it in place. Stitch at one half of an inch seam allowance and don't forget to leave an opening on one end. One trick I use is to sew all the way through and unpick some of the stitches to create the opening at the end. This is how I unpick the stitches to make the small opening since I stitched all the way through. Be sure not to go all the way to the elastic. After you make the opening, trim the excess fabric from the seam allowance on both sides and clip your corners to make crisp corners.
Now you can turn your mask inside out. Push out the corners for a crisp edge. We are going to close the opening with a top stitch at the end. This would be a good time to make sure that the elastic fits properly. You can give your mask a quick press and now it's time to put in the nose wire. This is optional. I'm using this pipe cleaner I got from a craft store, but you can use any flexible wire you have. I cut a 5 inch piece. Be sure to use pliers to curve the ends so they don't poke you or go through your fabric. The ends are curved and blunt. Now it's time to slide the wire into the mask. Make sure it's at the center of your mask. Once it's positioned correctly, pin it in place. Once it's in position, it's time to top stitch. You can top stitch all around the mask and close the opening at the same time. Be sure to also stitch on each side of the wire so that it doesn't move. You can either top stitch the sides or all around the mask like I've done here. Now we can add the side pleats. You can put on the mask to decide how much of a pleat you would want for a better fit. I took in about half an inch. Once you pin it in place, you will top stitch. You can use a half an inch seam allowance. After you sew it in place, you can give it a quick press and you're done. You now have a custom fit mask. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to share and subscribe.